Knowing Japanese kind of unlocked a lot of doors for me that uh, in the beginning, I guess, I, you know, you're, it's kind of like feeling your way in the dark and then slowly a light comes on somewhere that gets brighter and brighter and you can see more and more of the room. First, to get into the language, I would definitely say that self-study, you can only do so much with self-study. Get yourself out there and speak. Um, I think usually as foreigners, we have the urge to make something our own. And so if you have a really good foundation, or even if you don't have a really good foundation, just get out there and try, ask questions, and make certain situations where you'll be certain that you'll come out learning more or being more confident in your ability to speak the language. Um, reading is gonna come next, and you don't have to worry about writing so much. It can be the, you can take it in steps, uh, but just using it um, is going to be the best thing. So put yourself out there to use it. Something you shouldn't overlook in terms of learning Japanese is the ability, oh, other foreigners who speak Japanese well. well. Um, I think that a lot of foreigners are intimidated by other foreigners who speak the Japanese language well, but they also had to go through a struggle. Don't feel as, a, as if it's a competition, but you can learn from that person with the native language of your la you know, English language, native language or your other native language. You can glean off of their own experiences to apply to yourself so that way you are able to understand the language a lot easier. Um, if a Japanese person can barely speak English, but they can try to explain to you in the most layman's terms in, in Japanese and you hope that you understand it, uh, that's one way. But it'll be a lot easier if you have a person that's speaking the same mother tongue and telling you, this is, my al this is also my, my trouble, or this was my trouble. Um, uh, take from this so that way you can be able to apply it to yourself. Make sure you learn from other foreigners that speak Japanese well uh, because your goal is just to be a master but you can be able to learn it not just from native people but also people who have gone through the struggle too. If you're trying to learn Japanese um, come in with a blank slate. Uh, there is no one-to-one -one ratio a lot of times with Japanese. Um, they have a different way of rules of learning things. You have to learn it the way they do. Don't expect it to be the same as English. You're going to have a fight between your English side and your Japanese side. And you want to be you, but in Japanese you can't because Japanese doesn't really allow that to happen, right? You have to learn um, how they use the language. Yeah, just as much as how we use the language in America. Um, as a black man, you know, you go to the hood and you go talk to your friends. It's a different way that you might use the language compared to how you would use it in a professional setting, right? You gotta learn how to code switch. When I first arrived here, like I had a rudimentary knowledge of hearing Gata Katakana and maybe like maybe 50 to 100 or so kanji. Now that's like, you know, I have like a high school level knowledge, maybe a little bit more. The way that I learned Japanese was, I had a few classes in high school, of course, um, and in university level. But I think my biggest advice would be, if you're really serious about learning the language, really take some time and carve out a day where you're doing everything in Japanese. Um, when I was living back home in Atlanta, kind of in between living in Osaka and living in Nagoya for that three year period, I actually had Japanese roommates. <laughs> um, I had this huge apartment and I had a I had two friends of mine in Atlanta who were Japanese and we decided to like kind of like room together. And so, of course, if I'm dealing with them, you know, I got Japanese at home. Then uh, I went uh, further and made sure that one day a week I'm doing everything in Japanese, which means I'm reading Japanese books, I'm watching Japanese television, I'm looking at the internet in Japanese, and so on. I even had Japanese like recorded like J-Wave radio programs so that I can listen to in my car while I'm driving to work. So there was a guy once upon a time that used to do, a he was like A-J-A-T-T. -T on Twitter, all Japanese, all the time. 
and he was living in America and basically, you know, surrounded himself by everything Japanese in his home. So that when he walked in, it was just like being in anywhere in Japan until he left again. And over the course of a year, it became almost 100 percent fluent in Japanese. And I was blown away. So I was trying to get like that guy and uh, another black guy, by the way. So uh, if you're if you're looking at this. Thank you, dog. I appreciate it because <laughs> you really inspire me, uh, which leads me to maybe my second my second point of advice. Use the Internet. Go out on a limb and take and shift your phone's operating system to Japanese. You know, instead of doing that Google search in English, do it in Japanese. Start now. You know, put those those apps on your phone and use them. OK, but, uh, you know, the biggest thing, I guess, would be just take that time and be strict about it set a reminder have a get a study buddy do whatever you have to do but it's just like working out if you want to be slim you go to a gym if you want to learn Japanese this is the same thing you got to do you got to make that gym for your mind if I didn't speak any Japanese at all you're kind of there's a there's a serious glass ceiling here so the more Japanese you learn the mo and know and use on a daily basis, the more socially mobile you become. Some some you got to take it as a time to do it. Now, 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 and I know that I still have a long way to go, especially in terms of my keigo. Keiko, keigo, amari dekinai. I can't really use keigo, but at least I'm comfortable enough to use my Japanese. And I think that's what's most important. You just need to get comfortable with it. You don't need to be perfect, but just get comfortable with it. How I learned Japanese was I immersed myself in it. And when, you, when I say immerse myself, doesn't mean I was living in Japan, but back in Toronto, I was listening to the podcast. I was watching the variety shows. And variety shows are pretty much just comedy shows. Uh, think like Jimmy Kimmel or, you know, or Ellen DeGeneres type of shows, but more slapstick humor. And even though you may not get the humor in the beginning, trust me, if you watch it more and more, you will naturally get the humor and you'll start laughing with it. So I highly recommend watching variety shows. And in terms of reading and writing, I just read a lot of manga and play a lot of video games in Japanese. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to learn Japanese was so I can consume the Japanese content in that native language because I didn't want to wait for the uh, manga to be translated in English so I could finally read it. So I was reading the manga already in Japanese and when there was a word I didn't understand, I would just look up in a dictionary and then I would go back to reading that manga. And I highly recommend manga, especially maybe stuff like shoujo manga or um, slice of life manga because the vocabulary they use in those uh, books are the real vocabulary you use in your daily life. So you always hear the same words over and over again. And if the more you read, the more you'll hear those words and the more you'll understand those words. So I think you have to immerse yourself in the language and find your hobbies in that language. For me, it was video games and um, manga and then the podcast because I love to listen to the radio ever since I was young. So I'll just listen to the radio in Japanese. And yeah, in the beginning, I only understood 5%, but then I started understanding 10%. Then I started understanding 20%. So it just keeps going and going and going. And the main thing is to not give up, to just keep doing it. Um, so those were the main ways I learned Japanese. And I really have to say, especially my pronunciation is really good because I watched so much variety shows. So I'm always, my friends always say like, wow, why is your pronunciation so good? It's like, I watch variety shows. <laughs> I was learning Japanese on my own. Uh, for around two years and then I entered university and I took uh, Japanese as an elective. So I would say it's, it's good to take a class to give you the foundation for learning Japanese. But if you think you will be able to master Japanese only by taking class, you're wrong. It's, it's not going to work because Japanese classes are only meant to give you the foundation, you know, good grammar, uh, maybe some decent uh, vocabulary. But if you don't actually go out there and speak it and use it and write it, you won't get it naturally. So I think taking a Japanese class will give you a good foundation, but then you need to find your hobbies in, Jap in Japanese. And then if you have the opportunity, even if it's just a short 
summer program or you know one month um, homestay come to Japan just come here because once you're here you actually get a chance to use it in your daily life and you put yourself in the real immersion situation and then that's where I think your Japanese will just level up so for me it was I spent two years learning Japanese um, in university and I was I got really good at reading really good at writing really good at listening but my speaking was bad but once I came in my third year of university for my one year exchange program that's when my speaking skill just leveled up and I always say if I had not lived here at least for that one year or so and just practice speaking every day I probably would not be at the level that I am now so if you have the opportunity try to come here by any means even for a short-term program to really just experience the environment and then get the chance to speak on a regular basis so the first time I, I uh, learned anything about Japanese I was exploring languages and I just you know picked up a phonetic book and I, I wanted I think the one thing that scared me about Japanese or any language was I didn't want to sound like an American. I didn't want to have that super weird intonation on top of everything. And so I picked up a book and started learning the, the syllables and the sounds um, just to get myself comfortable. Like that was my process. Um, and then at college, there was a course offered. So for two years, I took Japanese. And I don't know if this course is offered anywhere else, but I think that was one of the biggest things for my learning. So if anyone can find a course like this, I'd recommend they take it, which is an hour a day, you don't speak any English. So from day one, you walk into the class and the teacher's just talking to you in Japanese, showing you pictures. You have no idea what she's saying. And then I think it was once a week or twice a week, there's a lecture and the same teacher shows up and she'll be, speak English, speak Japanese and explain the grammar, explain the things she went over. But from day one, for two years, I had an hour a day where I couldn't speak English at all. You couldn't speak to the guy next to you in English. You couldn't, you know, respond in English. You couldn't do anything. So that was really big foundation, right? I had to go in every day and I was forced to speak Japanese. Um, but the really big turning point for my Japanese was moving here. So I, I think I've heard a lot of people say this, which is, you know, you, you got to move to Japan. You got to date a Japanese person and whatnot. And I think that's all true. And I think those are, are pretty big aspects of it. But to me, the biggest turning point was in terms of a, a, a thing I could put my finger on is being able to think in Japanese. And I, was, I had that as a goal because I, I kept struggling. I would talk to people and I would think in English and say in Japanese and I would, I would go through that process. I would just keep repeating that. And I realized until I can think the thing I want to say as an idea and without saying any English, thinking any English, let it come out in Japanese, I didn't feel comfortable in all my interactions. I felt like I was moving too slow. And there was just a point in time at work. This is like a period of like two months where I realized I could, I could think what I was wanted to say and I could, it could just come out in Japanese. So I think having that as a goal, um, being in Japan, you know, having the goal of thinking in Japanese, not just being able to, to say things in Japanese, really helped me, you know, work towards that that position. Um, and I think another big thing is working in a Japanese company. Um, nobody around me spoke English at work. So I was forced to speak Japanese regularly. I'd come home and you know, I'd be tired, but I'd still speak Japanese to my wife. You know, occasionally I get tired and I just speak English, but just forcing yourself to speak Japanese, whether it's you know, a meetup, meeting up with people who agree we're only going to speak Japanese, whether it's going to a class where they force you to speak Japanese. It's, working at a company where, you know, the majority of your coworkers are Japanese. Something like that would really help you get better. So for an advice for those who are learning Japanese, don't base the Japanese language to English. So let's say I tried to teach somebody Aiueo, right? And in English, the first, oh, Aiueo are letters, uh, kind of alphabets, not really, yeah, yeah, vowels. And so, I try to write out kind of A, B, C, D, E, but people thought, you know, ah, since it's A, you're kind of similar, that E was B, and then U was C somehow. Like, they kind of base their mindset on English, and I feel like you should kind of break out of that. Once you know a little bit, then you can start, you know, translating, comparing, how would you say this in English and how is it Japanese, but when you're first starting, just, just learn without comparing. I think that's... Um, a good advice to give.
その日本で生まれて、まあ、茨城県で生まれてずっと6年生まで日本にいたわけなので12歳まではまあ外人ってことは分かってたけど別にそんな意識する必要なかったし意識してなかったのでまあ一旦アメリカに行って日本に戻ってきて確かにまあ私は外人なんだなっていう意識はもっとあるんですけどでもでも日本語で話すとなんかハーフですかってよく聞かれるんですけど実はあ違いますよみたいな。いつもあの説明するのがまあ面白いっていうか。I said something like,、um, you know, being in Japan, I didn't feel so much like a foreigner.、Um, although I knew I was a foreigner, I didn't,、uh, I didn't really feel so much like so. And then now being in America and coming back to Japan, I have to, and like once I speak Japanese, I have to like explain to them that I'm not half. You know, I was just kind of born and raised here、uh, for so long. If you want to learn Japanese, The best way to do it is to immerse yourself in Japanese culture. By that I mean go out drinking with Japanese people,、uh, go have dinner with Japanese families, go have dinner with Japanese guys and girls. And most importantly, if you are a guy, learn Japanese from a man. If you are a woman, learn Japanese from a woman. Because I didn't take that advice and people thought I was gay for two years because I learned Japanese from my girlfriend. So. so I've been studying Japanese for six years now. I would say I'm conversationally fluent, but I'm aiming for native fluency.、And、to me, that means that if you close your eyes and you heard me speak, you would think I'm Japanese. But I still make plenty of mistakes, and my, sometimes my accent gets off. But I can have conversations and connect with locals. So, my advice if you're learning Japanese is if you're a beginner, complete beginner, like I said, do your best to surround yourself with. Uh, as much Japanese content as possible. Try to find Japanese comedy, dramas, even anime without subtitles, and just listen and try to see how it's, what it's doing in the content. But of course, you need grammar and stuff like that. So, Tai Kim's Grammar Guide is free, that's really good. And Satori Reader, the app that I mentioned before, will keep you going. It's an SRS app. For people that have been learning Japanese, And I've hit a block, and they want to start again to refresh.、Uh, I recommend finding a language partner that you can speak to online regularly.、Uh, sorry, hire a Japanese language teacher, not a language partner. One of the sites I used was italki throughout my, my、uh, journey. And I went through a bunch of different teachers, but Once you find somebody that you can connect with and have a good relationship with, and that challenges you, right? Some of these teachers just want, like, they're fine with you being like free conversation and they don't push you. Find someone that is gonna keep you motivated but also challenge you and speak to them once a week, twice a week, so that you are always, you always have a fire under your ass so you move forward. That's my. Recommendations. The process of learning Japanese. When I found out I was accepted to JET, I studied Japanese in Kingston for six months before coming here.、Um, Tomoko sensei, hi. Thank you for everything. So she got, she got me a good start because here you have a Japanese lady who understands the Jamaican mindset to be able to introduce you into Japanese. So, when I came here, I couldn't speak or anything, it was only six months, but I got a very good start thanks to her, and I will always attribute the level I'm able to speak at now to her. Then, coming here, coming to rural Japan, where no one speaks English, so you, you're forced to immediately use everything you learned, even if it's coming out in the wrong order grammatically, even if in the social context it doesn't make sense. Like, I need milk. Like, you're, you're just trying to use every word you can to just be like, what is this? You know? And every time you get like a painful headache, just know that like your Japanese just leveled up. So, like, it, it, it is literally physically painful because your every language you speak shapes your mouth and the muscles that you use in your tongue and your mouth. So, Even speaking Japanese became physically painful for my face, but then after a while I got used to that too.、Um, it's just knowing that the discomfort is temporary and how good it's going to feel when that discomfort passes and you are what you are stressfully, like physically. 
probably using calories to do a year ago now just like comes out without you even thinking about it so like just wait like the pain will pass because I was an, an ALT in a high school assistant language teacher ALT um, on JET the high school ALTs have more free time I think than other ALTs or is it other way around but anyway I use my free time wisely because the in japan like a, a, a teacher's staff room is like a tradition it's considered like a traditional company like every other type of like company in japan so you have to look busy and so i had to look busy so they don't know i'm studying japanese but i don't have that much work to do like i plan my lessons you probably just recycle the same lessons you plan one lesson for the week and you teach the same lesson every day that week so i would be studying japanese at my desk like almost eight hours a day because I had to look busy and I couldn't fall asleep. So a lot, of, a lot of my circumstances just forced me into learning it and then I, re I recognized them as opportunities and then I used them. So um, I got hand-me-down Japanese study books, studied them at my desk. And then I realized I don't know how to measure if I'm good enough or not. Cause, so I wanted to take the JLPT to see if Japanese language proficiency test to see if I could pass it. And, I, and then I passed the N3 on my first try and I was like okay I can actually do this so like if you do things that encourage yourself kind of that helps you to like want to achieve the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing <laughs> so the next thing was then you know doing the masters in Japanese and I passed the N3 on my first try I thought I was a big deal and then I go into these classes and I was like Oof. and every and then here came the headaches again like I don't think they have like searing headaches like trying to keep up in these classes and then by the next semester and in the next semester it became nothing again and and then starting at my job again the searing headaches and then now six months later I can do it you know so learning another language it's, it's uncomfortable it's annoying it's stressful but those are temporary and it's more rewarding to understand what's being said around me and contribute at work be seen as an equal at work the most challenging part or parts I would say again is the, the having to form different sounds with your mouth can be very painful and tongue-tying that's a struggle and it's almost like any exercise if you're doing a sport you have to target a muscle that makes you better at that sport you have to target here you have to take the language for what it is and stop trying to compare it to your language or trying to directly translate it to something you would say in that language. Eavesdrop a lot. That's how you get cues. Oh, so when people say this thing, that's how they reply. Like, I've heard this on the train, I've heard this on the bus, I've heard this in the staff room. Every time someone says that, the other person says this. And even though I don't know what that thing it means, the next time I hear somebody say that, I say this and they're like, wow, you're like a native speaker. And I'm like, I don't know what I just said. But yeah, just like children don't know everything they're saying either, but you just mimic and you, you pick up social cues from eavesdropping. You can, watch, you can watch shows, but remember those are scripted too for drama. Like you can definitely do that, but um, just eavesdrop all the time. Like, Take your headphones out and just listen in the train. Listen everywhere you are. Um, but right, you said challenges, so exercising the, the face and stop trying to directly translate things and equate them to your culture because there are things here that are completely opposite and foreign to your country and your culture. Just take it as it is. This is another challenge for me, like if I've been speaking English for a long time, I can't speak Japanese. If I've been speaking Japanese for a long time, I can't speak English. But I'm gonna try. Okay, so... これは英語で何て言うとっていう考えるよりそれはそれでそのまま使った方がなんか自然に出ると思う。I think I just said nonsense, but yeah. What I said was the same thing I said before. Like instead of trying to understand 
what's this in English or what's this in Japanese, just use the thing yeah, exactly. as it is. I think there's two elements to Japanese, right? One, I mean, there's two, two elements to, to any language learning. There is the, 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 the sort of learning of the acquisition of words, right? The acquisition of vocabulary, um, both for reading, speaking, and writing, whatever, whatever right? <laughs> Then there is the, uh, the, the, the app, the, the learning of, of grammar. Grammar is, is, can be thought of as, you know, there's two types of grammar. There's the correct grammar and there's the grammar that people actually use, <laughs> right? So, and I think the grammar that people actually use and the learning of words is one of those things where you have to throw yourself out into mm. situations where you will butcher the language mm where you will not know what to say, where you will not necessarily always feel comfortable, but you will break through um, towards learning to think in a language, mm. right? So that is something I would say. The other part, you know, the, the, the other part is again about, hey, you just gotta really bear down and, and study and, and, and get technical with it. But, the idea of, of learning to speak, the idea of wanting to speak in the language. You first have to be, you first have to have that. If you don't really feel comfortable and don't want to speak in the language, you're never going to really learn the language, right? If you don't have friends and, and connections and, 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 and those kinds of things that will inspire you to use a language, then where are you with it? Right? That's, so that's been that that's that I think has been is what what I would place value on, and of course you know underlying that is all of the technical stuff as well. But but don't don't lose fact of what a language is. It's a living, breathing thing that is intended to help humans communicate, right? Okay. To bring is, us together. Is there what's the most underrated part uh, of learning the language? I think it's Westerners um, who are grounded in the Roman alphabet and you know um, phonetical. Um, a phonetical language system. Mm -hmm. The learning to think in effectively what is more of a hieroglyphic system, the movement from, uh, you know, the ability to, to learning to go back and forth between those is an amazing thing. Okay. I mean, you know, you think of it, you think of particularly Japanese and Chinese, right? They, they from the start, you know, the visualization of a character that has meaning, that has multiple pronunciations, combination of those, right? As opposed, and yes, each character has a phonetical sound to it, but by looking at the character, you're not going to know the phonetical sound. You yes. have to remember the phonetical sound, mm -hmm. given your ability to draw upon what you know the meaning of that character is visually, right? That is, a, that is to me, it, it is a major task right and it is a, it is a it is a um it is a threshold into really really understanding the language in a, in a deep way so that that's probably one of the most interesting mm -hmm. aspects of it mm -hmm. right if you go that far with the language yeah. right a lot of people run from kanji they see the <laughs> yeah well that's because it is, that's because of what i just described right <laughs> yeah. i mean your ability to remember them is is yeah. limited until you're able to really visualize them in yeah. that way yeah. sure. right yeah. So, um, so that, that, that would be the thing I would say. I do speak a far language. I speak like, uh, I'm from because I was born and raised in West Africa, Senegal. I speak Wolof and Maninke, yeah. So it's six, so I speak Wolof and Maninke. I speak uh, French, Japanese, English, and Arabic, yeah. So speaking Japanese isn't difficult, but it's not difficult, yeah. I mean, it's not difficult, but it's not easy, so because like, first I came to Japan, when I heard like, Yoko so konnichiwa, I was like, because the sounds is like, you know, when you put like something paper on the machine, and the machine say, kata 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 For me, the sound was like that, kata 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 So I told my father, he was father, I'm sorry. No matter how long I'm gonna stay here, 20 years, 30 years, I will never gonna learn, speak this language, so. But like three months later, four months later, I realized it's isn't difficult. Like uh, it was easy. Just to, the easy way to learn the Japanese isn't go to school. I mean, school is good because you can learn the kanji, 
the hiragana katakana but try to make a friend with japanese and don't be shy to speak the language whatever comes to your uh, to your head say it whatever comes to your mind say it and if you were a man trying to find a girl like you know who who, who can help you uh, like a friendly Japanese like you know they can help you that's the best way for example me I do speak Japanese better than my English actually but I didn't go to school to learn Japanese so I didn't go to school so you can you can you can do it I mean it's not easy just to like put the energy don't be shy love the language respect the culture and try to get to know you know and take everything in a positive way so I'll use an analogy. It's like if you want to be a really good runner, you have to run. You have to train, you have to exercise. So you have to just get out there and use the language. You have to force yourself. It's like getting up in the morning to work out. You have to do the work. You have to put the work in, unless you're just gifted with languages. But you put the work in, put yourself in an environment where you have to use Japanese. You won't want to, but the results will be there. You go to a, a, a meeting or a meetup, or you, you go to a, um, a party with your Japanese colleagues or you go to lunch with Japanese co-workers or you watch Japanese TV put yourself in an environment where you have to hear Japanese even when you don't want to right so that's fundamentals so the fundamentals of language are the same with fundamentals of learning a skill or any trade you have to just put in the time um, as far as shortcuts um, comics help but I would start with children's comics don't start to read the comic that's maybe aimed at adults, read children's comics, because the pictures and the language give you a context, so you start to learn words. For me, learning it was just having my family, meaning my host parents, around and just loving them and wanting to communicate with them, wanting them to, underst wanting them to understand me, wanting to understand them. Um, and then when I, uh, I'm a, I like writing things, so when I started dating um, in Japan, when I first came to Japan, I would write notes. This is back before the internet, so you write notes to people. So I was writing notes, and I would ask my Japanese teacher how to write certain things. So I was kind of embarrassed, but I was like, how do I say I love you, or I need you, or I want to take you out, or something like that? And they'd help me. So I mean, you know, um, putting yourself in a situation where you have to communicate with people is key. So I said before, go to a network session, meet people, respond to them in Japanese, right? Or uh, just put yourself out there. There's really no shortcut that worked for me. It was just meeting people, wanting to communicate with them, making mistakes, learning from the mistakes, rinse and repeat. I've been studying Japanese for about 10 years. So, and I took the JLPT N3, I think two years ago, past that. And then I took N2 last December. I failed that. <laughs> That's a hard test. Um, I'll take it again in July, whatever. So I'm somewhere between N3 and N2. N2 is basically business level and N3 is like intermediate, I guess. Um, so I'm in the middle of there somewhere. And every morning I read news articles in Japanese on, on the way, on the train, going to work. Um, and that's about, about an hour. So I try to read as many articles as I can. I find I use an app called Easy Japanese. You can find it in the iTunes store. And this app has um, vocabulary highlighted by the JLPT level. Um, and you can do articles that are on the easier side or articles that are on the more difficult side. And they they get their articles from like NHK and Asahi Shimbun and um, all the reputable news sources um, and sometimes there's videos that are connected to the, the news article so you can watch that as well It'll all be in Japanese um, and so whenever I come across these things or interesting situations that have happened to me on a daily day basis I, I write a journal um, and I also upload that to the internet I have native Japanese people correct that that's an app called hello talk I recommend that as well so you can see their corrections and and the parts that you messed up on and then I then take all that information I transcribe it or rewrite it by hand into my notebooks and so I have like three notebooks full of just like daily 
journals at least since I think I started two years ago so I have about and I don't really do them every day now but I have about like 460 entries and I think if you are starting off Japanese the way you at least at least for me my entries were very short maybe one or two sentences um, but then they've gotten longer to being like paragraphs and I think if I really pushed myself I could probably write an essay if I wanted to I'm self-taught by the way I didn't go to class I don't have any like language school experience or college experience in a, an actual Japanese class but um, just through that due diligence you know just getting into a routine and a rhythm you'll pick it up faster and if you start off just by translating your day-to-day -day, um, thoughts then you can uh, be able to say those thoughts especially if you write them down because then like oh I'm thinking oh what should I eat today uh, Yakimo, yakimo, tabini iko. So let's go eat yakimo. Ah, doko da? Where? Ah, supa. <laughs> Ato donkey kana. So you can get it at the supermarket or donkey, right? So you know, it's very conversational. I think I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not good at keigo. I can read it, and I hate it. Um, oh, I hate keigo so much, but um. That's a whole nother beast. So if you just get to the point where you know hiragana, katakana, and can like maybe write a few sentences of your day-to-day -day thoughts. I want to wear these shoes. I need to take out the garbage. I should buy these groceries. And translate those into Japanese, and you'll be much, much closer to being fluent. I think pronunciation is the most underrated <laughs> uh, part of learning Japanese. There's a certain rhythm in Japanese. I'm not the best. My girlfriend says I'm onchi, which means tone deaf. So the pitch of words goes up and down depending on the word because there's lots of uh, uh, homonyms. Homonyms, yeah, words that sound the same but are different. So you have like ame and ame. I'm not even sure if I did that right, <laughs> but one means candy and one means rain, um, and so yeah, it, 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 I think it, I, since I, I have a lot of Japanese friends, a lot of the times is that they they make fun of, especially in, in, in media, it's like that's the trope. It's like oh, the foreigner speaks this really weird, awkward Japanese. Watashi wa emery des. <laughs> I, I just, it's so cringy and I, 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 I don't like it. I wish they would stop. And I'm, uh, it's so embarrassing. I think, I think we all should get together and like, you know, really fix the pronunciation because it's so not the good, not the good. <laughs> Something that accelerated my learning, my uh, Japanese learning was when my son was born because I okay. had to deal with doctors and nurses and uh, social workers. Okay. So that time, you know, commuting between home and hospitals, so my Japanese um, quite uh, accelerated. And of course, I had to apply some effort to learn. Okay. And so that, which was something that really helped me, Japanese ability. So I was doing the, all that in Japanese. Okay. Yeah, and of course, there are a lot of things that I didn't know, but I could ask. But you, you studied like you were self-taught, right? Like you studied books or did you go to school for it or? Okay, for, when I first started, I used to go to, uh, it's a CT facility where you uh, oh, volunteers you teach oh. foreigners for okay. free. Yeah. Although later, I, when I discovered my own method of learning, I, I employed that. I, I stopped going there, uh, okay. which is basically listening a lot. Mm -hmm. I had some seminars on CD in Japanese that I listened to. First, I couldn't even understand anything, but I kept listening to the same thing over and over and over and over. Again, what happened was that I'll remember the phrases without knowing what they mean. Okay. And then when I'm working, then it just pops up in the head and I'll check the meaning. And then I go, oh. So over time, it's, you know, like it was from like zero to like 100%. Okay. Because I listen over and over. And that's the method that I said. Was it the same thing or you were listening to a variety of material? I'll get the same thing, listen to it like 
I remember I had these CDs on seminars on CD, and it one is half an hour okay. long. So in commuting, I I drive to work. It's yeah. thirty minutes. So like in a whole week, when going, I listen to it. Coming back, I listen to it. Like I listen to it like twelve times. Okay. In a week. Okay. Yeah. So slowly, I started like more or less speaking like. The speaker in the seminar, okay, <laughs> because I just remember exactly the phrases. So mm -hmm. I, I started figuring out some of the things even before I look at them up in the dictionary, by you know from context. Yes, yeah. and so I, from that I started learning very natural Japanese. Whereas when I said when I was going through this volunteer, they took you, you know, very formal Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> if you've <laughs> experienced that, so I, I realized that I couldn't really use that immediately because everyone's you know when they're talking they're just using formal japanese so that helped me of course it was formal but in a sense that because it was like he's speaking to you use a lot of everyday expressions yeah. so, so it's that, more informal yeah or casual it's yeah yeah so it's just uh that so it helped me this is how i okay. i improve and of course through interaction with all these they had to sign okay. contracts had to so that helped me um um, learn Japanese. Okay. Hit the ground running. That's the best thing to do. The first day you land in Japan, if your Japanese isn't really up to scratch, start studying Japanese. Don't waste any time. And I know people who waste a year or two um, messing around, potentially. Not messing around, but not really, not really seriously studying the language. And then when an opportunity did arise, it was like, I don't speak enough of the language. Same thing happened to me. I was on a live TV show once when I was an international student. My Japanese was not up to scratch. There were times where I was completely lost. I know what was going on. So just nodding along with the, with the host, like, yeah, definitely, I, I completely agree. I was completely lost. And I feel like, for me, that's been a really key moment in my own study. I realized that if I was more prepared for that interview, if I had studied more during that year, I could have been, who knows where, <laughs> who knows where really. So now I can't say prepared, it's really important. But that preparation will really pay off while living in Japan. My senpai is like, he's another black guy living in Japan. And I met him when I was at my first year in university. And my senpai said, he, he had just come back from Japan. And he looked at me and he's like, you're studying Japanese? I was like, yeah. And I was like, the only other black person on my course. And I think he was the only black person on his course. And he looked at me and he says, when you get to Japan, get out of your comfort zone. Whatever your comfort zone is, get out of it. The second you reach, your, you reach Japan, Get out of your comfort zone. Do things that you never want to do. Do things you never expected you would do. Do things that you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. Those are the things you need to do. Like the way my Japanese got as far as it did in the first year of being here was that it was after the, the solo traveling I did. I came back to Tokyo and I was like, I need to level up further. I want to speak more Japanese. So I would just keep traveling by myself. I'd go to bars by myself, not, not izakayas, bars, small local bars, and you would sit there in the center table, or well, center seat of the bar, you'd make friends with the barman, and of course no one speaks Japanese. Make friends with the barman, hang out, and people will cycle in for the whole, like sort of a evening, and you will talk to the most amazing people you'll ever meet. And no one's gonna speak English to you, no one's gonna try. You're in a bar in the middle of the countryside, you're in a small bar in the middle of Tokyo. And that's a really good way to sort of make yourself do things you never really expected to do. You can do it in cafes, like a small cafe. You can do the same thing, but really get out of your comfort zone. I think that's really important. So the way I learned Japanese was a combination of different things. Um, my parents, I was very lucky. My parents were very supportive of educational endeavors. So back in like 96, I would just ask for books, CD-ROMs, and they'd buy it for me. Like I would go to Borders or Barnes and Nobles, and I would just beg my parents, let me have this Japanese language book and they would buy it for me and I would study and practice as much as I could that way. When I was in my teens, I was lucky enough to have like Japanese friends and they would correct me if I made mistakes. I was able to date like a, like a Japanese speaker in high school. So that was pretty cool too. I took Japanese class in high school, but that was really easy at that point because the way they teach Japanese in America, it depends. The way they taught it at my high school was like the first year you learn like how to say like the days of the year, I mean the days of the week. And in the second year, you learned a little bit about how to say months. They don't really want you to learn Japanese. You're just taking it for the credits. But yeah, so it was a combination of self-study and my friends helping me and then making a lot of mistakes. Like making a lot of mistakes and just failing forward. If I make a mistake, I realized that was terrible, but I also had the experience of making that mistake and then making sure that it wouldn't happen again. First things first, you kind of have to be determined 
because I mean with that kind of situation anyone would give up you know along the way it's like I mean I'm not doing this you know stay away from me but for me what I what happened to me was um, I let's see well I I got into the university you know and you know my major was decided already I mean and I just went through the whole thing and I did a lot of self-studying um, by myself um, I had Japanese friends who could speak English so they would put me through also um, I also had a tutor um, to tutor me um, in the Japanese language and still that wasn't enough because I mean in university you know you're not talking about normal Japanese language you're dealing with special terms you know that are very very specific to that course so to be honest I, I'm gonna be honest I really don't know how I did it because like I said I did I had to retake a lot of exams you know because I didn't understand what was going on you know but Somehow, I, I guess it was my determination that kept me. Because um, at that point, I was like, look, you're in Japan here. You have this opportunity. You're not going to mess it up. You're going to do whatever needs to be done. And you're going to take advantage of this. And you're going to get the job done. And that's exactly what happened. I just was really determined, you know, to learn the language. And so, now, あの、私、あの、私のあの国であの、ナイジェリアで多分こういう仕事を多分あの、や、やる、やるチャンスがないかもしれません、ナイジェリアで。でも、あの、日本で、まあ、あの、その言葉、まあ、あの、言葉能力